That's why you never see the product suffer because I am the product. That's why he never is nowhere re-upping because he is re up. <laughs> 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 I owe you a dinner, man. I owe you a dinner. I obviously can't afford to get I'm a, anything I'm a out. Like I told Puffy, I don't let men take me out, sir. I'm good. I think it's more yeah, interesting that Steve Harvey's there. Survey says uh, the number one most interesting thing about this photo is Kitty to Sutter Eskimo brother. So it looks like Cat Williams is more determined than ever to keep his foot on his op's neck because he is coming out to spill some more tea on the freak offs that have been happening in the industry for the longest time. But it's not just that because he is specifically coming out to spill some tea and threaten to release some alleged freak off videos between Steve Harvey and Diddy. To put things straight, Cat is allegedly claiming that Diddy and Steve used to have a little something something going on and he is claiming to have the receipts to back things up. Okay, y'all better get on this because the situation just went from bad to worse. Uh, before I get started, just let me say, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm too fine. <laughs> uh, I don't know what y'all doing. You find something else to do. I'm too fine. Okay, y'all might need to sit down for this because there is some insanity going on in Hollywood that needs to be addressed ASAP. Now, we've always known that celebs be wilding a lot in Hollywood, but in the past couple of months alone, we've gotten a peek at some of the craziest and wildest things that celebs have been involved in for years. Girl, it's a whole new world out there in Hollywood, but some people in the know are still insisting that it's still worse than we know, and that paints a very clear image of what Hollywood is really like. Now, most celebs usually try to cover up for each other, you know, always say nice things things about each other, blah, blah, blah. But then there are some people who have made themselves champions of the truth and have made it their business to expose some really shady things that go on behind closed doors. And Cat Williams is one of them. Cat has been open about this part of the industry, but he only used to talk about it in general, you know, talking about the Illuminati and how his career has been held back because he has refused to stop exposing the Illuminati. But he recently switched things up and started spilling some tea on some really specific people in the industry. I don't know what changed, but something serious had to have gone down over the holidays because Kat has been out here spilling the craziest tea on celebs and slamming them for being hypocrites. It all started from his Club Shay Shay podcast interview where he called out so many celebs saying stuff like how Kevin Jart was an industry plant, Steve Harvey stealing his jokes, and even Diddy offering him $50 million for a one night stand. It was really messy, but what we didn't know at the time was that it was the tip of the iceberg because Kat still had a lot of tea to spill on celebs. His Club Shay Shay interview got a lot of people talking and it even got a lot of celebs reacting to it and dragging him for filth. Kevin Hart called him a clown, Cedric the Entertainer called him a troublemaker, and Tiffany Haddish called him a drug addict. But I find it interesting that not one person boldly came out to call him a liar. This is probably because everyone knows that Kat doesn't make up stories and he always has the receipts to back up his claims. So nobody wanted to be out here testing Kat and having him drop receipts on their tea. But as it turns out, Kat didn't even need to be pushed because he was already willing to spill the tea anyways. Things popped off immediately after the interview on Club Shay Shay aired, and since then, it's like he just can't stop spilling tea on your faves. He has had a lot to say, but one that recently had people in a chokehold is the tea that he spilled on Steve Harvey, Marjorie Harvey, and Diddy because he hinted that Steve and Marjorie have allegedly been swinging with Diddy. Now, I have no way of verifying this information because I'm just letting y'all know what the grapevine is saying, so you'd better do more more digging because the drama in this situation is next level insane. But if you stop to think about this, it kind of lines up with the allegations that have been going on about Diddy and the Harveys for a hot minute now. You know, about how the Harveys allegedly pimped Lori out to Diddy because they wanted that major Hollywood connection. And what better way to get that connection than through one of the biggest movers and shakers of the industry? If you're wondering why Kat is spilling this story on Steve, well, it shouldn't be so surprising if you know about the history between these two. Steve calls it a rivalry, but a According to Kat, it's nowhere close to being a rivalry because Steve is nowhere close to being on his level. In case you haven't figured it out by this time, let me break it down for you. These two do not like each other at all on any level and they can barely stand each other. Steve thinks that Kat is a hypocrite who has built his entire career on trash talking his fellow celebrities and Kat thinks that Steve is unethical and sold his soul 
for fame and he is being controlled by the elites. And if y'all haven't been paying attention to the beef between these two, Kat has been calling Steve out for years for stealing his jokes and trying to pass them off as his own. He even said the same thing on the Club Shay Shay podcast when he revealed that Steve has been stealing his jokes for years. He even went as far as to claim that Steve used to attend his shows just so he could steal Kat's jokes and then pass it off as his once he felt like enough time had passed that people wouldn't remember. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over KB and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. But that's not the only thing that Kat had accused Steve of stealing, because he also accused Steve of straight up lying to his fans for years and grossly overtelling the story of how broke he used to be. Steve has always told his grass to gray story of how he used to be broke and homeless. He claimed that he used to live in his car in a parking lot because he couldn't afford to pay rent. I used to spend the night in hotel parking lots. What was I going to do? I ain't had nowhere to stay, so I lived in the car. I had $35. And I said, come on, God, man, I've been trying to make this dream come true. You done left me out here like this. This has been one of the biggest stories of Steve's career because it's like a grass to grace story for him and it has had people feeling inspired by him. But Kat came out to blast Steve, accusing him of lying because there was no time in Steve's life when he was broke enough to live in his car. But that's not the worst because Kat also claimed that that was his story and not Steve. Like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that. You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. So according to Kat, Steve was not only stealing his jokes, but also stealing his life story as well. And I get why that would make him mad. So yeah, these two men are like oil and water. They do not get along at all. Anywho, the real drama started when Kat started hinting that Steve had had something to do with Lori being in so many high profile relationships. And he hinted that Steve might have allegedly been pimping her out to so many relationships. Many people have always felt a type of way about Steve's favorite of Lori, and even though we're not a part of their family, it's super clear that he likes her way better than his own kids, even though she's not his biological child. Don't get me wrong, I am not saying that he shouldn't love her because she's not his biological child, because it's a great thing that he's taken other kids and loving them like his. But the thing is, loving her is not the problem. The problem is that he loves her like she is his only child. I mean, he doesn't even love his other stepkids like that. At first, people thought that the reason he liked Lori so much was that she's a really beautiful woman and she was enjoying that pretty privilege from him. Well, according to Kat, we were kind of right about that because he allegedly decided to weaponize that pretty privilege into something else. He allegedly pimped her out to men for fame and clout. Remember when Lori claimed that Steve used to take her on frequent father-daughter dates? One of my favorite moments was when I was about 15 years old and I told you I wanted to start dating. So um, you took me on one of our annual father-daughter dates to my favorite Japanese restaurant. And you just started talking to me about guys and you just told me that you you know, always supported me and you'd always be there for me no matter what and you loved me. This was cute, but people found it weird that she was the only one that he did this to. I mean, he was pretty absent in the lives of his twin daughters and he didn't even make the effort to attend their high school graduation. An insider wrote, I went to high school with the twins. There were a few years ahead of me, but people always talked and all eyes were on them because of who their father was. He wasn't present at their graduation. So if Steve couldn't be bothered to go to his daughter's graduation, y'all can bet that he wasn't taking them 
to father-daughter dates either. And before people start talking about how Steve liked Lori because she was Marjorie's daughter, let me just shock y'all because Marjorie has another daughter, Morgan, who did not get the same treatment from Steve. It was just Lori, which again, makes us wonder what was really going on. Just to further emphasize how special Stevie treated Lori, it sometimes seems like she is the only kid that he likes. His son, Broderick, even hinted that Steve was a deadbeat dad to him for the first 16 years of his life because they didn't even have a relationship. My mom felt a type of way when I left. Oh, why, why are you going? He hasn't been here. He wasn't here 16 years. Yeah, I got all that, but I know that's what I need. And I know that's what you need too. But if you think that's bad, well, Broderick still had it easier than Steve's other son, Winton, because something really shady went down between Winton and Steve because Steve literally got investigated by the police and CPS for putting paws on the boy to the point where he, the boy, had physical injuries on his body. According to TMZ, according to the kids, Steve hit him with a belt and then a paddleboard, the kind used for hazing in fraternities. According to the police report, cops took photos of the boy's injuries, showing bruises on his buttocks and right thighs as well as cuts on his leg. The police report says the boy told cops the beating was so brutal he had trouble urinating for days. Steve claimed that the boy had been getting in trouble at school for not doing his homework, but he went way overboard with that. So if he wasn't ignoring his kids, he was putting paws on them. But somehow, Lori was the only one who got the princess treatment? Yeah, that don't add up until you factor in the rumors that those father-daughter dates were allegedly Steve's way of preparing her to be pimped out. Allegedly. I mean, think about it. She's the only one who got to go on those dates and she's the only one who got famous because of her love life. And it's not just public speculation because apparently Steve's other kids felt the same way. Long before this went down, insider reports had it that there was a lot of trouble in the family. Not a source said, he did the right thing adopting Marjorie's kids and loves them like his own, but there's a lot of dissension among the blended Harvey clan. There has unfortunately been some jealousy lingering amongst the siblings over Lori, who's the most famous of all Stevie's kids, taking over the spotlight with her high profile love life. So yeah, the situation has been very tense, but the rumors have been going around that she has allegedly been pimped out by Lori to men in the industry, and allegedly one of the first men that he tried to pimp her out to is Jay-Z, but she got so much backlash that Steve had to abort mission. In early 2019, Lori was invited to the Rock Nation brunch brunch that was hosted by Jay-Z, and in this video, fans felt like she was being really flirty, you know, playing with her hair, throwing her head back, and all that stuff. Now, y'all know that the Bayhive doesn't play with Beyonce, and even though many fans don't really like Jay-Z because he once cheated on Beyonce, they still came hard for Lori, and they flooded her comments with bees. They also left some threatening comments under her post, saying things like, let this be your first and last warning. Play your game and keep it with the R&B guys, period. If you try that ish again, you gon' lose that smile. And I don't wanna have to come back to your page, sis. According to Kat, Steve was trying to get her hooked with a rich man, not get canceled, so he immediately called off the mission, and that's that's why y'all never saw Lori with Jay-Z anymore. But that wasn't the end of the situation, because all they did was switch tactics, and the next thing we knew, she was in a relationship with Diddy. It took all of four or five weeks. When Lori stepped out with Diddy, the relationship was kinda sus on so many levels, because, for one, there were rumors that she had dated Diddy's son, Christian. Even though she has come out to deny the allegations, many people still don't believe it. However, that wasn't the last time, because there were so many things about that relationship that raised red flags. For for one, Diddy was 25 years older than Lori, and that was creepy on so many levels. I mean, Diddy was Steve's age, but somehow, Steve thought that the relationship was okay, and don't even get me started on how weird it was that Lori used to be friends with Diddy's baby mama, so why did she start dating Diddy less than four months after Kim passed away? She even made a post showing respect to Kim when she said, I'm having such a hard processing this one. You were such a beautiful person in and out. Thank you for being so sweet and loving to me. I'm so glad I told you I loved and missed you the last time I saw you. Your energy was truly something special. An angel on earth and now in heaven. Rip Mama Kim. But when she started dating Diddy, the picture magically got deleted from her social media and people found this shady. Well, according to Kat, this is because Steve made her delete it because she was getting dragged and shamed for being a disloyal friend to Kim. But in the middle of this mess, there's one thing that caught the attention of eagle-eyed fans, and that's the color of Lori's nail polish when she dated Diddy. Her nails were always painted white, which got people talking because y'all know what Cassie had to say about 
about white nails and freak-offs, which is why people suspect that Lori was yet another victim of Diddy's freak-offs. Every time Lori stepped out with Diddy, her nails were painted white. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, in Cassie's lawsuit, she dropped the bomb that Diddy had a particular liking for white nail polish. It wasn't just some quirky fashion preference. Oh no, according to Cassie, Diddy made her wear white nails because he loved the stark contrast against the dark skin of the male escorts he forced her to cozy up with. And it wasn't just Cassie who fell victim to the white nail saga. Rumors started swirling that he pulled the same thing with Young Miami because she had on white nails every time she was spotted with Diddy. The speculations went wild, hinting that she might have been entangled in Diddy's peculiar rendezvous. Fans also noticed that Lori stopped wearing white nail polish after her breakup with Diddy, and it led to rumors that she was probably traumatized or something. Now, at the time, people expected Steve Harvey to get in there and protect his precious baby girl from Diddy. She was the most important child, but he let her date someone with a reputation for treating women badly. Yeah, it didn't make a lot of sense until Kat came out to claim that Steve was probably involved in Diddy's freak-offs, and he allegedly used Lori as a stepping stone to get to Diddy. This had a lot of people adding two and two together, and they dug out this picture of Diddy and Marjorie on vacation with Lori and Diddy. What kind of parents go on a vacation with their daughter? Especially since that daughter is in a relationship with a man their age. Yeah, it's sus, but Kat's story kind of gets better. According to Kat, Steve and Marjorie have allegedly been swingers, and they've both opened their marriage to other people. And that's why they've been able to kill off all the cheating rumors that they've both had in the past couple of years that they've been married. Now, Marjorie's past has been kind of shady, and people often talk about how she has allegedly been manipulating Steve for a long time. And girl, going by Marjorie's colorful past, it's not gonna be so hard for her to do that. I mean, she literally earned the nickname of Lady Heroin, and if that doesn't tell you something, then I don't know what will. Her first husband, Jim Townsend, was a drug dealer who got busted. Marjorie was pregnant with their second child at the time, and the DEA suspected her of being involved in her husband's drug business. But Jim managed to convince the FBI to leave her out of this, and he took the fall for it. Her second husband was also a drug dealer, and their marriage played out pretty much the same way. He he got busted and the DEA suspected Marjorie, but again, she went scot-free. Oh, and she divorced both husbands almost immediately after they went to jail, so she was clearly not a ride or die. One interesting thing that people seem to forget about Steve and Marjorie is that they actually first met back in the 90s when Steve was still broke. Marjorie was still married to her first husband when Steve put moves on her, but she turned him down because he wasn't rich enough for her and they lost touch. They both went their separate ways after that and life moved on for both of them. Marjorie got divorced, married again, Again and divorced again. Steve continued to cheat on his second wife, Mary, until the marriage ended in a bitter and messy divorce in 2005, and he was once more a single man. Okay, so y'all know how I said that Steve and Marjorie didn't stay in touch after she dumped him for not being rich enough for her? Well, for some reason, Marjorie remained in touch with his bodyguard, Big Boom. Not only did they keep in touch, but they also remained in close contact, and they developed some sort of friendship. Now, some people say that Marjorie and Big Boom had way more going on than just friendship alone, and honestly, that would explain a lot of things, but I have no receipts for that. It's just the internet talking. Anywho, Big Boom waited until the time was right for him to carefully slide Marjorie back into Steve's life. The second Steve filed for divorce from his second wife, Big Boom carefully brought up the topic of Marjorie and insisted that Steve meet her again after more than 10 years. Steve himself revealed this in an interview with People Magazine where he said, he told me, look, the only time I've ever seen you happy was when you were with that woman Marjorie. Now, before you go and do something stupid and marry another woman, I'm calling her. It was like being reborn. I messed up so many times in my life. She made all the difference. When you're happy at home, you can make a lot of things happen. Well, fast forward to 2024, Marjorie and Steve have been together for almost 19 years and married for 17. But all of a sudden, rumors start going around that Marjorie is having an affair with Big Boom of all people. This wasn't surprising because again, both she and Steve have admitted to cheating in their past relationships. Things got interesting when Big Boom hinted that he had had an affair with Marjorie. He wrote, I think beauty hides pain. That's because we look at the outside and we don't realize there's a lot of pain inside. That's just the part they pay the most attention to because that's what we're paying attention to. But a lot of times we lose ourselves trying to create a false pretense for others to see. There's a broken heart inside of those big walls. There's a little troubled mind inside that nice fancy car. There's a lonely woman behind that beautiful look. Take care of your pain and you won't have to spend so much money trying to hide it. The next thing we knew, Marjorie and Steve came out to deny the allegations, claiming that they were fine. Okay. Oh,
<laughs> Marjorie also denied the allegations, writing, My husband and I don't usually stop to address all the foolishness and lies that have been spread about us. However, to whom much is given, much is required. I understand that with my platform comes some sort of responsibility to those that may not be as strong as we are. Well, according to Kat, there were some elements of truth in the rumors, but it wasn't technically cheating because Steve was aware of the relationship because they were in a three-way relationship and were allegedly swinging with multiple men, including allegedly Diddy. Not only were they allegedly swinging with Diddy, but Kat is claiming that he has access to some videos that were allegedly recorded by Diddy during one of their freak offs, and he is now threatening to release the video. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but if Kat does leak the video, wouldn't that fall under the scope of revenge P-word? You know, considering the beef between him, Steve, and Diddy. Now, I know that Kat has the support of the people, but the last thing he wants is to have Diddy and Steve come after him with a lawsuit, because the court of public opinion can't help him in the court of law. However, fans believe Kat, and they left comments saying, either Steve doesn't have a say, or he's all about material things and status. He probably thought that a job or marriage would come out of that, since she's not A-list. P. No sane parent would let their child, who's barely an adult, date a dangerous 50-yo man like him, especially after hearing the rumors about Kim's death. I heard Cat Williams had leaked a video of Steve Harvey pimping out Lori Harvey to Diddy, and it's crazy cause. I actually remember when Steve and Diddy had that meeting on that boat. And this Cat Williams-ish is so funny, cause growing up we all heard the rumbles, from Diddy being gay to Steve Harvey wearing a wig. Chilly, at this point, it's starting to look like half of Hollywood was involved in Diddy's freak-offs, but y'all drop your thoughts about this in the comments, then check out this next video.